On one side, you got a 496 big block Chevy. On the other side, you got three intake manifolds, a dual plane, a single plane, and a tunnel ramp. The question is, which makes more power? In this video, we're gonna answer the age old question. What intake do I pick for my big block Chevy? Now we built a mild 496, but what intake should we run on? Should we run a dual plane and get all that low speed power? Should we run a single plane and get all that top end power? Or what happens when we run a tunnel ramp? Let's find out. To run our intake manifold comparison on a big block Chevy, obviously we needed a big block Chevy. So we put together a 496 stroker. You know, if you're gonna put together a big block, nobody puts together a 454 anymore, certainly not a 427 or 396. It's at least a 496. And you know, a lot of guys go, if you have the right block, you go to a 540 or a 555 or 565. But we put together a 496 and this was going in a boat. So we actually made it low compression. It was like, it was less than eight and a half. It was 8.25, 8.3 to one. And we're going to run a, they were going to run a big blower on it, but they let me use this motor so that we could run this test. And I wanted to compare a dual plane to a single plane to a tunnel ram intake, kind of show the differences. And, you know, tunnel rams are real popular with boat guys. So we wanted to show, hey, how much extra power is available if you do that? And would guys want to put a tunnel ram on, you know, a street application? It sticks out of the hood. You know, you have hood clearance issues, obviously. You maybe have to cut a hole in the hood, but is the extra power really worth it? So we want to show them. So we set up this 496. And it had a lot of good parts on it. It had obviously ARP studs and everything. It had AFR uh, 315 cylinder heads, the aluminum cylinder heads. So those are really good. Our cam was one of my, you know, kind of go to cams for the big block Chevy stuff. It was their BR300. It's actually a blower cam, which was, you know, we were going to use this on a blower application. And that thing works really well. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can see it. It's kind of a, you know what I would call a medium sized cam for a big block Chevy. If we wanted to really make power, we would put a, you know, 275, 282, or a 285, 295 kind of cam in it. But this was a good cam for, you know, driving around and stuff, especially on a 496. This cam worked well in A, it works well under boost. We've run it with the turbo, you know, all of that stuff. So the cam was good. We had good heads on it, and naturally it had an MSC distributor, and we had our dyno headers on it and stuff. And then we also ran, uh, we started off this thing with an, an Edelbrock RPM air gap, which is a good intake and, you know, good dual plane. It's kind of the one that I would recommend for most street applications because they work really well. But maybe on a big block, especially on a 496, guys want to step up to the single plane because, you know, it does make more power. But how much of a trade-off is there between the single plane and the dual plane? And then is the tunnel ram even any better than a single plane? Well, that's what we are here to find out. So when we ran this 498, you know, a little over eight to one big block Chevy, the 496, with an RPM air gap and a 950 HP carburetor back in the day, because this was all the way back in 2003. So this was run a while ago. Our big block made 626 horsepower. And 578 foot-pounds of torque. It had a nice, you know, pretty flat curve there above 550 foot-pounds for most of the curve from basically 3,000 all the way out to nearly 6,000 RPM. So, you know, it does what big block, big blocks do. And especially considering the fact that it had such low compression, which is, you know, not ideal. <laughs> but it was going in, a, like I said, it was going in a roots-blown, non-intercooled big block boat motor. So you want to make sure that you know, they can run that thing on pump gas with boost. It was going to work out really well. So this is our dual plane intake uh, power curve. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we added a single plane. So here's our single plane, and that's a Victor Junior, you know, a 454R. And it does indeed make more power. If you take a look out here at uh, 62 or 300 RPM, 652 horsepower which is you know good power again especially considering the low compression and it did make more power than the dual plane which we've come to expect in fact it made more power than the dual plane from 4600 on out but take a look below that you know at the 4000 rpm range this thing lost the dual the single plane lost went from 531 foot pounds to 586 foot pounds so that's a big drop in torque 
Again, this is always the trade-off, single plane, dual plane. Where do you want your power production? Is it more important from 3,000 to 4,500 or from 4,500 out to 6,500? You guys have to decide that. <laughs> so now that we've taken a look at our single plane versus dual plane, let's check out what happened when we finally installed the tunnel ring. Took a look at the power output with the RPM air gap on our 496, and then we also took a look at the Victor Junior, and it's the one thing I wanted to point out in this comparison is everybody thinks that, oh, you know, which one makes more torque? Immediately you think the dual plane makes more torque. But the reality is the dual plane made 577, 578 foot-pounds, but the Victor Jr. made 578 foot-pounds. <laughs> so when you ask which one makes the most torque, they actually make a very comparable peak torque. It's just that they do it at different RPMs. So now let's find out what happened when we run the tunnel ram. So here's the tunnel ram that we installed, and as you can see, huge power gains from the tunnel ram. And this is nice, and this is why guys put tunnel rams on, because they do make a lot more power than either a single plane or a dual plane. And we ran, it, it was a YN tunnel ram, kind of a standard deal, two Holly 750s. They work out really well, and equipped with that tunnel ram, power output our 496, jump to 687 horsepower. Torque was all the way up to 618 foot-pounds. So the tunnel ram not only made more power, which we, you know, we might expect, but also a lot more torque. And I know what a lot of guys are thinking, yeah, well, you started that run at 4,000 RPM on the tunnel ram. Does the thing not meter down low? Does it make a whole bunch less power down low? Well, I did a sweep, a lower RPM sweep also, that we can add on to that. And as you can see, the tunnel ram made more power down low than the single plane slightly less than the dual plane. So again, you know, for a lower RPM application for a street application on a big block, dual plane, that RPM air gap works really well. But the tunnel ram actually did fairly well too. I mean, it was better than the single plane and then it was a lot better than either one of them, you know, from, from 4,500 on out. So it made big power gain. So here's your decision. Yes, it makes a lot more power. It even meters down low, it works really well. Cause the nice thing is on a tunnel ram, you can have two carburetors, but you don't have to have two 950s or two 1050 dominators. You can have two good-sized carburetors that will actually meter correctly because you have two of them. That's, you know, two 750s flows a lot more than one 950. Two 650s flows a lot more than one 950. So you can make the tunnel ram work with the right-sized carburetors, and they don't have to be really big. That's why back in the day, the... The, this kind of tunnel ram or something for a small block and two 660 center squirters <laughs> was kind of the hot setup. But this combination worked really well. But this tunnel ram, even though this thing had low compression, was, you know, knocking on the door of 700 horsepower. It did it, you know, before 6,500 RPM, which makes it a good combination. And this thing ended up making, you know, some pretty good power with a supercharger on it, which we will take a look at in just a second. So here's the tunnel ram. You guys have to decide, is this extra power worth hood clearance if you're going to run it like in a vehicle? Or what about your boat? Tunnel ramps look cool on a boat. Let's check out our next combination. After running our intake test on the 496, we decided, hey, this thing has low compression. It's designed for boost. We need to run boost on it. So we installed a Vortex supercharger. This one was a YSI, capable of you know, certainly over 1,000 horsepower without any problem. And we did it as a blow-through carbureted application. We used a, a Mighty Demon carburetor housed inside the Vortex enclosure. Hook the blower up. Yeah, it's easy to install bolts right onto the cylinder head and stuff. Put our pulleys on there. Got the head unit on. And here's what happened after we introduced Boost <laughs> to our Boost Ready 496. You can see big, big power gains. I mean, this thing made over 900. It made like 930 horsepower and 794 horsepower and this is only at about seven pounds of boost so it just goes to show you what happens when you combine a very efficient 496 stroker big block with even just a little bit of boost i mean obviously with a bigger blower something that was capable of supporting a ton more power more boost we could make way more power of this so you know it's an eight and a half to one you're only running seven pounds of boost this thing's not intercooled because you're using a blow through carburetor and this thing makes over 900 horsepower so imagine what kind of street motor this would be in a Chevelle or Camaro or even a truck. This thing would be awesome. And that's what happens when you combine a big block with boost. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from the intake test on our 496 big block Chevy? 
Well, when it comes to power production, nothing beats a tunnel rig. Not the single plane, not the dual plane. Now, you need to look at where you want to make power, as always, with the single plane and the dual plane. The dual plane makes more power down low, the single plane makes more power up top, but the tunnel rod makes a lot more than both of them, a lot more peak power and a lot more peak torque. And when we look down at the lower RPM ranges, it actually was better than the single plane. So the question is not about power, it's about fitment. If you're putting it in a Chevelle or a Camaro or a truck, do you want that thing sticking out of the hood? I say yes. But when you're choosing it for a boat, as long as it's not a family boat with an enclosed motor, you definitely need a tunnel ram. Show that thing off and you get more power. The only thing better than a tunnel ram is a supercharger. <laughs> Armature Holder guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Come on, you know what you should do. I'll keep testing.